What's up, good people? It's James Mack. And I wanted to just come and do this video real quick. I see something big coming with Black Americans and I wanted to address it right now and bring it to your attention. Without no further ado, let's get straight to the video. Here's what's going on. Black people are gonna be in a situation in the next couple years. And I wanna tell you why. So listen closely to the end of the video. I'm gonna give you some good motivation, but I want you to sit tight. This is not gonna take long at all. Buckle in. I'm working on a new bill right now. I'm in construction. You know, I, I'm a jeweler, but I also do, you know, real estate. This is one of the new bills that I'm working on. Uh, me and my business partner, we set this new build up, you know, gentrifying neighborhood, okay? So we did a new build. Um, this used to be an all black neighborhood, okay? Some of the workers, they left for the day and everything. Um, and they are Mexican, okay? Um, I would love black workers, but we just can't find black workers that do quality work for decent prices, okay? Because we tried it. But anyway, that's not what I want to talk about. So I took the workers to McDonald's, okay? I don't eat McDonald's. I took the workers to McDonald's in a predominantly, used to be a predominantly black neighborhood because it's now white and Mexican, right? It transformed to a white and Mexican neighborhood, okay? The McDonald's that used to be all black people, I used to hate going there because it was kind of ghetto, right? Because it, black people, they just doing whatever. That McDonald's now, I took those guys to, is all Mexican people working there. Shout out to the Mexicans, love. Via by Mexicano Cabrones. All Mexican people working in there. So you mean to tell me that it went from all black to now all, all Mexican McDonald's workers, right? Okay, cool. So that means all the black people that used to work there lost their job. They, they no longer employed there. And I see this happening all the time, right? So I'm not gonna get too political with this video. I'm not leaning either way, Democrat or Republican. But Donald Trump did say something that offended me, right? He said, blacks need to be worried about black jobs because the Mexicans or the immigrants in general are coming to take those jobs. And I was like, man, what are you talking about? Black jobs, man. You know, you disrespecting me and my, my culture, talking about some black jobs. However, he is right, and I see it, right? The jobs that black people used to, the lower end jobs that black people could run to are being removed, and I should say immigrants, because we don't know if they're from Mexico, Honduras, Brazil, wherever, uh, Africa, Chinese, wherever. Those jobs are being replaced by those people, right? So what are you talking about, James Mack? What I'm talking about is they had a situation where they said that majority of black Americans in 2050 would have zero income. That means no income. And I could see that in the forecast, right? Because if you don't have an education, if you're black American, you don't have education, and you don't you have a record, a felony or something, which black Americans catching felonies left and right or charges left and right, what's gonna happen in 2030, right? Five more years from now, what's gonna happen? Six more years from now. You're going to be unemployable, period, out the gate, right? And the fastest, the fastest growing minority sector that's making money is immigrants, predominantly Mexican-American, Mexicans coming to America. Let's, let's really take a look at that real quick, okay? Because I know a lot of people like, and shout out to the Mexicans once again. I know a lot of people like, well, you could do it too, okay? So let's look at some things. Under the Biden administration, they made it okay for immigrants to just come over, right? Cool. I want you to think about something. When immigrant comes to this country, if it's another immigrant that's in charge of a job, that's in charge of an apartment complex, that's in charge of resources of any of that, then guess what's gonna happen? They're gonna hire their people. So that means not only are the African-Americans being discriminated and being left out of corporate America if you don't have an education or being left out of jobs because of racism. Now you have the immigrants coming in saying we don't want to hire you either. We're, we're helping our own people, right? We're helping the immigrants, the Mexicans, the Hondurans, the, the Brazilians. We're helping our own people. We don't want to hire you black Americans either. So that, let's really dive deep into that. So if an immigrant comes to America and has no rental history or no credit history, right? That's a good thing, right? Because you don't have no, 
you you have a fresh clean start right you don't have no bad rental history right you never got down on your luck and got evicted so now you got eviction on your record and with the credit no credit is better than bad credit or having some credit cards or something like that that you didn't pay off or whatever they're coming into a situation where they have no credit technically because if you have bad credit from mexico or you have bad credit from guatemala that's not necessarily going to follow you over to america and the american system right that's a whole different type of credit right so i don't know about the visa cards and the master cards and honduras and and, and and in belize and stuff like that but we're talking about here in america okay you don't have no credit so that's a better look right so we'll give you some credit because you don't have any credit right you can go to the dealership and get something you can go to the, the apartment and, and let's talk about the apartments, right? I personally, when I was really, you know, in the apartment um, uh, searching, you know, many years ago, found a lot of discrimination when it came, when it comes to apartments, right? Let's let's face it, you know, you come and you fill out the application, they find out you're black. It's a, you know, they don't really want you in a community like that for the most part, you know what I mean? It's like, ah, I don't know. I don't know if I want this black American guy in the community, I could just wait and get a, a, a different type of person and give the apartment to them, right? I've personally faced that, right? But you have immigrants, Mexicans, Hondurans, Brazilians, whatever the case may be, that's owning apartment complexes now that can say, you know what, if you don't have a social security card, if you don't have a birth certificate, if you don't have anything, and you we know you fresh in America and we feel your pain, we understand that then we're going to go ahead and rent to you. As long as you got your money, we're going to go ahead and give you a chance. But you, black American, I don't know. You know, you was here, you got a felony, you know, your credit is not good. I, I don't know. I don't think we're going to rent to you. But we don't know what they did in Honduras. We don't know what they did in Mexico. We don't know none of that. All we know is they're here now, and now we're going to give them a clean start, right? Let's let's keep going because I, this is really bothering me. And I want to wake up my black American, especially my black American men. I want to wake y'all up on this. When we talk about black jobs, let's talk about some of the stuff like Uber and stuff like that, right? So you say, okay, I'm gonna drive the Uber. You know, they don't want to hire me at the little factories. I can't really get on the construction because all the construction is being dominated by the immigrants, and they have their own temp services. So when they come in, they say, okay, you don't have a social, no birth certificate, no nothing. All right, cool. You can start. It's going to be, you're only going to get $12 an hour, but you can start. Cool. So they have groups and, and, and shout out to the, shout out to the immigrants that do the construction, but they have a pool full of help. But when it comes to the black American, you know, we deserve a little bit more because we've been here, right? So we want to get paid $25 an hour, $30 an hour for the construction, but that's not what they're paying. You know, they're paying 13, 14, 15, which is cool to somebody that just came from making pesos, right? The 13, 14 dollar, dollar, dollar a job an hour, right? When you live in somewhere that only costs $800 a month and it's two or three of y'all that live together and everybody is making 13, 40, 14 dollars an hour. When you was just making some pesos, when you was just making like $5, $10 a day, you, you balling, right? But for us that's been here suffering, that's not enough. Okay, cool. You say, James, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Listen, I just watched Elon Musk the other night roll out a robo taxi. I'm watching autonomous vehicles being developed. And that's right there in the next five years. There will be no more driving jobs for the most part. So that's cutting African-Americans out right there. The construction, you might as well forget about it unless you have your own construction. And what now what it is, is that the immigrants have developed such a strong reputation in construction. They will go. I even go with them. They will go with them 100 percent before they go with a questionable black firm or a questionable black construction company that just kind of started. And we don't have a lot of, you know, what I mean, workers and things like that. I don't know about that. I'm not going to really, you know, what I mean, let me go with these Mexicans. I know that's going to do the job. I know it's going to do it right. This is what they do. They do construction. They build, they're master builders. Okay, so cool. So we get the driving jobs out of there. I just told you I went to the McDonald's and seen none but Mexicans. So the, all the fast food jobs are slowly transforming over to the immigrants. You go to the fast food places, not only is it starting to become autonomous, where they only have nobody at the front desk anymore, you gotta order your stuff on the what's the name, but in the back of there, now it's Mexicans. Mexicans washing the dishes. 
or I should say immigrants because they ain't all from Mexico. Immigrants washing the dishes, immigrants cooking the food. The black people, where are you? What are you seeing with your black Americans? Your black men are laying on the streets right now. Your black men are laying on the streets. Your black men are going crazy. They develop medicines and different type of foods to change the DNA structure of the black man. They have mRNA weapons. Right. To change your DNA, to change the proteins in your brain and make you go crazy. We're seeing it. They're destroying the black men and the black women. But most definitely the black men, they're getting them out of here. Let's look at something else. Let's talk about the driving jobs again. A lot of brothers in the trucking, right? The trucking is good right now, right? For the black men, right? Harris, Biden. And once again, I'm not on no political side. I'm just saying. They developed the situation where they're trying to pass bills to allow immigrants to come and get legal driver's license. So you mean tell me somebody that may not have a driver's license in another country, totally messed up their driver's license, come to America and get a crispy, clean, brand new driver's license with no driver record. But the trucker companies and all that, to see that, you got a fresh, clean, clean driving record with no, no blemishes on it. Okay, we hiring you. But for the people that's been targeted communities been targeted uh driving while black or just made mistakes and drove you know and, and just got blemishes on your record whatever the case may be get out of there so a lot of the driving jobs are about between autonomous vehicles and immigrants who got fresh clean driver's license you're about to be out of there you know you're about to be out of there okay so i'm really worried about that right so let's let's look at that driving thing again. So there's a lot of brothers that don't have license because in certain states, if you have back child support, they suspend your license. How can someone help their family? How can someone do something for their kids when if they're late or if they have back child support, you suspend their license? That doesn't even make sense to me personally. Right. And then you suspend their license. They still can't catch up. Then you put them in jail. So it's a lot of black men in jail right now just off child support. Right. When you got people that's here that don't do nothing for their child, but their child is in Honduras, their child is in Mexico, whatever. And that don't even co you know, that, that that don't even come together. Right. They can't enforce child support here on somebody who got kids in Mexico or Honduras or Belize or Brazil or Africa, wherever the immigrants come from. And shout out to the immigrants. I'm not down on the immigrants. You come to get a new star, but no black man can go to Mexico and do this. You can't go to Honduras and do this. You can't go to Belize and do this. Um, I'm talking about with nothing, no documentation. You can't even get in the country, right? Go ahead and, and try to sneak into Mexico or Honduras and see what happens to you as a black man. See what they do to you, right? Here is wide open, right? Okay, cool. Where does that leave the black man? Where does that leave the black people? They're, put, they're putting it together to where in, in the next couple of years, black, black folks are doing extremely bad right now. And they're gonna be doing even worse because you see the Mexican people and the immigrants coming into the black communities being granted with no credit mortgages for these homes that used to be black but now they come in and they have their own credit unions, Latino credit union. They have other type of credit unions that will lend to them or will. Listen, a lady told me about a program they have in the Latino community that says they would take a group of Latin, a group of Mexican, whatever the people are, they would take all their income together and approve them for a mortgage. Right. They will approve three or more people for a mortgage with no credit based on them making 14 15 dollars an hour all together and then so boom they get one house right then they do it again then they do it again because the latinos understand or the credit unions understand the business so they know that it's you know what i mean they're with the whole but they're trying to make their people come up i never seen a black credit union i never seen a black owned credit union i never seen a black owned bank the black owned bank still is not just lending to the black people like that you got to understand the, you, you, the real estate you know the real estate is not going anywhere, so why not lend, lend, lend to the black people to get real estate? It just don't make sense, right? It just don't make sense. Here in North Carolina, we got the MNF Bank. 
Stand up if you got a loan from MNF Bank to buy real estate. Stand up if you got a, a loan from a credit union to buy real estate. You know, I know somebody got denied for a $20,000 loan on a real estate, $20,000 loan to help fix the property up. Come on, guys. I see something big on the horizon with black people and it's not good. So we have to we have to come together and start to understand these problems. I want to give you so much juicy content, but I have to talk about the real and what's really bothering me in my heart. And when I see my brothers laying on the ground more than ever, when I see my brothers laughing to their self, dealing with mental illness issues because of the marijuana smoke, because of the drinking, because of the bad food. When I see the sisters doing great because they have the education, Right, because they, they are in corporate America, but they're still going through the issues in corporate America. Cause there's a lot of women that still is not being not getting the positions that they deserve in corporate America. That's a whole different talk though. You know, um I'm concerned with what I'm seeing. The poverty levels of the African Americans. You have the Indian people coming over, shout out to the Indian people dominating the IT space dominating the computer space that's something black folks are not even really cultured in right that's their culture right so you have a country that's already overpopulated so they got tons and tons of indians to come over here and populate these these cities right they don't hey listen if you come from an overpopulated country to come here is like coming to heaven. It's peaceful. You come into somewhere where there's plenty of space and greenery, where you just went somewhere where there's somebody, every corner you turn is somebody, right? So they're flocking over here by the droves, right? In North Carolina, where I do my real estate, I see nothing but Indians coming, populating this area, populating this space, taking over the hood, taking over the suburbs, taking over everything. Between them and the Mexicans and the white people, black men don't stand a chance. And that's just my honest opinion, right? That's just my honest opinion, right? And they still developing situations and different techniques to get you out of there, right? So, you know, I had to, you know, wake you guys up and talk about this issue right now. This is your boy. This is your man, excuse me, James Mack. Guys, we got to come up with some solutions, right? We have to get back to the real estate. You know, we have to get back to the real estate. If we can, we got to put our money together. We have to put our money together. I might have to start a, a mutual fund or a hedge fund or something like that to try to bring people with this money that may be low income, bring it together and try to work something out because the black man is on a on a on a path headed nowhere. You dig? Nowhere. And we are the developers. We man, then nobody tell me of all the inventions. I didn't know a black woman made the microwave. I know a black person made the internet. You know what I mean? I, I didn't know these things, right? And so I started to understand that a lot of stoplight, the stoplight, you know, a lot of things we see, we developed, right? So we can develop more things, right? The robo taxi and all that, man, Elon Musk is not that smart. We're smart. I thought about so many inventions. I just didn't have the funding or the capital or even the motivation just to get on it, right? But I am, but I'm just letting you know. We are smart African-Americans. We're smart. You see the Africans, that's all their own is engineering. Africans on engineer, Indians on IT, white folks is on finances and real estate. Mexicans is on real estate and construction. What is the black man on entertainment? And they're trying to cut you out of that. You see what they're doing to all our leaders, all our influential black folks. They let them get up and they strip them of all their wreck. Their, their wealth and what they do, they spend the money right back with white lawyers trying to fight cases in white judicial systems. I don't mean to sound racist. I'm just saying it's all set up. Right. So we don't have nobody to look forward to. And then they promote the terribleness and the badness to us. Right. You don't see them promoting what the, the, the white actors or the white musicians do. They don't promote that. They promote the good of what Elon Musk is doing. They promote the good of what Kathy uh, Ark is doing. You know, um, they promote the good of what, you know, uh, Warren Buffett is doing. They use good things, positive motivation to help their people see a better way. The, the Bitcoin situation, things like that. They promote the worst of our culture to us and to you. 
the walk the worst, right? You know, they I, I've seen more Diddy um commercials and more Diddy social media than I ever seen in my life right now, right? Because they want you to feed into how terrible black men are. That's terrible what he did. And it is. But uh, that's terrible what he did. That's terrible what Bill Cosby did. That's terrible what Mike Tyson did. That's terrible what Kanye did. That is just terrible what, you know, uh, 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 R. Kelly did. And it is. But that right there is almost a billion dollars worth of wealth in the black community. Gone. You know, you out of there. Right? Every time it happens like that, right? I don't know too many black... Me and Magic Johnson, right? They got him out of there too. He got the A's and everything, but they don't talk about that. Shout out to Magic Johnson. He created a lot of jobs from the black community. But they, you know, they're on that other side, right? Where, you know, if they don't ruffle any feathers, they won't be touched. But if they ruffle some feathers, they already know they're out of there. Black men, black men, this is my cry to you. Black women, this is my cry to you. African, I mean, American black women and black men. Because the African is a, is a whole different species. It's a whole different being. I'm talking about the American black man and woman who has no culture. We have no culture. So we are just here kind of lost in America, right? They put us in a situation where one black person make it, they're gone, right? They're gone. Black person rich, so you all the riches, so you all the wealth, but... If all the black men got together, they could start a, a, a mutual fund for black men and give black men grants to go get property. We talk about instead of buying a Ferrari or Bugatti, you could take that money and start giving each black man $20,000 for a down payment. You know, you could do things like this. You actually do. Beyonce did it for the black women. She started a fund where she gave black women money, but you don't see that for the black men. I'm so worried about the black man. I'm so worried about myself, right? Because we have to get up out this trap, right? That America is trying to put us in, right? Donald Trump said one more thing, and I'm not, I'm not a Donald Trump lover, but he said some things that really kind of had me thinking. I remember last debate, he said, Joe Biden trying to put you back into slavery. And I was like, man, this dude crazy. Is they really trying to put us back into slavery? Because who's going to be the slaves? You got all these black men that's in prison right now. They're slaves. They're working right now for 50 cents an hour, a dollar an hour, if you got a real good job. Who's really going to be the slaves? You know, who is really going to be the slaves of the future when it really boils down to it? And AI take over and the jobs is low. And the Mexicans run the construction. And the white folks run, you know, the, the, the real estate. And the Indians run the IT. Keep the faith, y'all. James Mack, I'm out. Let's go. I just want to touch y'all with that. Keep the faith. Like, subscribe, and share. Look out for more content.